In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys all about sets, giving you a basic tutorial, how they work, um, why they're useful, and why we would want to use them over a list. Now, a set in Python is its own unique data type, and it looks something like this. I'm going to say s is equal to curly brackets, and then I can just create a few elements here, um, like so, okay? And if I go type of s, you can see that we get our it's, our, its own data type class set. Now, when we create a list in Python, we do something with square brackets. We do one, two, three, four, five, so on like this. And if I type L, you can see we get class list. So these are indeed different. Now, what's different about them? So a list in Python is an ordered collection data type. Um, it's a mutable data type. A set is also a mutable data type, but the main difference here is ordered. Now, a list is ordered, a set is not. And what that means is that if I want to find, for example, the first element in our list, well, Python knows that one is our first element. It knows that fifth is our, our five, sorry, is our fifth element. It knows that three is the third element. It remembers this order. And that's really important. And that's really good for a lot of applications. But in some instances, we don't care about that. So I'll show you if I want to get the first element, I do L0. If I want to get the last one, I do L4, right? And that's great. We all know that um, how that works. Now watch what happens if I try to grab the first element of my set. So you say, okay, well, you want uh, you want one, all you gotta do is type S0. And you can see that it actually throws me an error. And this is because the set object does not support indexing. And what that means is that this is actually not ordered. So when we create this, yes, it looks ordered to us, but within the computer, um, there's no distinct order in where these numbers or these elements are stored. They're just kind of there. You can think of it as just like a big circle and there's a bunch of random elements. I don't want to say random. There's a bunch of elements within the circle. Uh, there's no specific order. All the computer knows is if they're there or if they are not there. So another property of sets is the fact that they only contain unique elements. And what I mean by that is if I create, if I recreate my list and I do something like one, one, three, four, and I print my list, you get, we get one, 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 three, four. Now watch if I try to do this with a set. So I say S equals one, 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 three, four. And I print S, you see, we only get one, three, and four. And this is a property of a set. It only contains unique unordered elements. And that is something you really need to understand and remember whenever you're using sets, unique unordered elements. Okay. So if we try to add in the way we add to sets by doing S dot add um, an element that already exists, something like three, and we print S, you can see that it doesn't actually add that to our set. And that's because that element already exists. And this is really useful on um, the fact that it only contains unique elements because it actually allows us to remove duplicate elements from lists. So if we're given a list of say names and say, for example, someone wrote down their name twice and we want to count how many names are in that list. Well, we don't want to count um, lists or names that exist twice or people wrote them down twice. We only want to count ones that are unique. So the way we could do that is we could convert the list into a set and then count how many elements are in the set. Uh, and that's a really useful way. And that's what I'm going to show you an example of how that works later on uh, in this file on the right here. So to remove something from a set, we can do s dot remove and simply give it the argument we want to remove. So in this case, if I want to remove three, I can remove three, print s, I get one, four. Now I just want to go over one more time the importance of the unordered part of the set. If we're ever doing anything and we care about the order of our elements or we care about the frequency of our elements, we're not going to want to use a set. We only want to use a set in cases where we care if data exists or if it doesn't exist. And when I say data, I just mean elements. Okay. Um, so another thing I didn't talk about is if we create a set, you can uh, actually give it different elements as well. They don't have to be the same type. So you can get like one, three, and that works fine. Just like a list. Just want to make sure you guys know that it doesn't have to just be with numbers. It's just easier to use numbers sometimes. Um, and when we add things, so like if we add like negative eight, and then we print S, you can see we get negative eight over here, one, three string, and it's not in the same order in which we typed it in. So just to prove to you that this really is unordered and it's kind of random the way that it displays it to the screen to us. Um, it's not completely random, but that's the way we can think of it for right now. So why would we want to use a set then? Well, what, what's the point of it? We could just do the same thing with lists. We could just remove um, duplicate elements. Well, sets are actually really fast. And the reason they're really fast is because they're unordered. 
because we simply know if elements exist or don't exist, we can actually find if an element exists in a list really or in a set really, really fast. So fast that it's almost constant time, or you can think of it as constant time. So I have to quickly go over uh, something called big O notation right now, just so you can understand uh, what's known as the time complexity of sets versus lists. I'm going to try to do this really basically and not take up a ton of time, um, but it's really important that you understand this, especially if you're uh, writing any like large programs or anything that's going to deal with large amounts of data. Um, this could save you a lot of time in your programs. So I'm creating a list. I'm going to say x for x in range 100 like this, okay? Now, if we wanted to see if an element exists in our list, the way that we would do this uh, in Python is we could do something like elements in L. And simply, this is like the Python way to do it. Um, but all this is really doing is it's running a standard for loop on our list. So we're saying for L in X, if EL equals equals whatever we're looking for. So let's just say looking for to make this simple. Oops. Then we're just going to return um, like the index of that element. So since we need the index, we're going to do for i in enumerate x return i like that. Okay. And then looking for like this is equal to and then whatever number. So in this case, I'm going to do 98. Okay. So the way that this works now, and this is fairly straightforward, is we're looping through uh, not l. We're not x, sorry, L. We're looping through L, which is a list containing numbers from 0 to 99. And we're seeing if the number 98 exists. So for every element in the list, we're checking if it's equal to 98. Now, if it is, that's great. We found our element and we can return that index. Okay. The only issue with this is, well, what if the number is not in the list? That means we're going to have to look through the entire list just to find out that this element doesn't actually exist. Now, same thing if our element is one of the last elements in the list, or even if it's just somewhere near the middle, or even sometimes near the beginning. This can take a really long amount of time. In fact, this takes big O of n time, which is known as a linear function, right? So however big uh, x gets, and x is going to be like the length of our list, is um, how long it takes to find if an element exists, OK? Obviously, it depends where the element is in the list, but we usually go based off worst case scenario. So saying like the element was the last element in the list, starting from the end and looking to the beginning, we would have to look through every single element in the list. Now with sets, this is not how this works. With sets, it actually just takes one operation um, to be able to determine if an element is in the list. So remember I set up there if we do something like, uh, what do you call it? Looking for in L. This line is actually the exact same as this, except it just gives us like a true or false value. So I could say true, meaning like, yes, we found it's in the list. Okay. This is the exact same as this. Now, if I do, and I create a set now and I say L equals, I'll say, I guess we'll do S equals X for X in range a hundred like this. Okay. And now I change this to looking for in S. Well, this actually doesn't now take n operations. This line is not the same as the line of this, replacing this with S. It's the same as big O of one, which simply means constant time, one operation. Okay. So just know that whenever we're looking for things in a list, it's much, much, much faster to either first convert it to a set if we're going to be looking for more than one different element. Um, or if we already have a set, we'll create a set first rather than creating a list and look in that set because it's going to take us one operation as opposed to n. Now, this doesn't really matter if you're looking at any things that are less than like 100,000 um, elements long because on a computer, those are going to run really fast. You're going to be able to look through that really quickly. But if you're looking through um, lists that have like billions or trillions of elements, then creating them, <laughs> turning them into a set is obviously going to be a lot faster when we're looking for elements, especially if we're looking for more than one. Okay. Um, so I hope that kind of makes sense. I know it's slightly confusing. If you don't know anything about big O notation, just know that sets are really fast to find things and see if things are in there. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about here is um, two more operations that sets are really fast at and sets are really fast at adding things and removing things from the list. So whenever you need to remove something 
from a list, sorry, um, what we have to do is we first have to find the index of that element. So again, we're going to have to do this. And then once we find it, instead of returning true, what we would have to do is we'd have to say, well, whatever L, L dot, and then I think you can just do like remove and then whatever the index is. So you do L dot remove I, and that would get rid of that current index. So again, this takes us O N operations to remove an element. Now, same thing if we're adding things to the list. So not um, not at the end, if you're adding it at the end, it only takes one operation. But if you're adding in the middle, so like if I did like L dot insert, and then I inserted something somewhere in the middle, well, this would actually take us n operations to do. Unlike a set where if you do something like s dot add, this actually takes the same o of one operations to uh, complete. So s dot add three, this takes o of one. And same thing for move, removing something. If we said s dot remove like five, this again takes o of one operations um, to complete. And the reason again for this is because whenever we're looking for something in the set, it takes o one. So to add something, we simply Obviously, it's only going to take a one because we just have to throw it in. But when we're removing it, we find like the index or wherever it exists in the set and then we can remove it and we can do that so quickly. So that's why we would want to use a set whenever we're like trying to look if an element exists or we're trying to add it if we're trying to remove it. So quickly to recap, I know I went through a little bit of kind of like math here and like big O notation, which might be confusing to you guys. Um, but what you want to do uh, is you want to use a set when you're looking for elements in something. So you want to see if something exists. You don't care how many times it exists. You don't care what order it comes in. You only care if it is there. That's when you want to use a set. You want to use sets when you're just going to be adding things uh, like that are unique or removing elements because that's really fast operation. And sets are also useful for determining if you have like multiple elements or duplicate elements in your list. The way that you can do that and this is a really cool trick, actually. So like dupe is equal to the len of set. Okay, so set of like s um, equal equal to the len of s. So say you have s and it's a list here, okay? And you create like a bunch of elements in here like that, okay? Five, let's add six. And you want to see if any duplicate elements exist in S. Well, you could write a for loop and you can look through and you can see if any duplicates, you could sort the list, whatever. There's so many ways to do this. But the fastest way um, is to just simply convert this to a set and then just check the length of the set versus the length of the original um, like list. So because what's going to happen is we convert this to a set, we're going to say like at set S is equal to and then it's going to look something like this and say one, 13, four, five, six. Now the length of this is obviously less than the length of the uh, original list. So that means we must have had at least one duplicate element in our list. And by just giving a condition like this here, that's going to give us false um, because these lengths are not the same. So we know there'd be duplicates. So we can actually just do like not equal to if we wanted to get a true value for duplicates existing in the list. I figured I'd just show that to you because that comes up um, quite often and you want to do something like this and this saves you uh, a, quite a bit of time. One last thing for any of you guys that are still here watching and didn't uh, die off when I started talking about big O notation, when you convert something to a set, so if you do like set of S, this takes O of N operations because what has to happen is we have to take every element in the list and add it into a set. And since every time we add to a set, it takes O1, well, if you have N elements of O1, that is exactly O of N operations. So just keep that in mind if you're converting things to set and you want to do stuff faster than ON, so faster than linear, um, it's just something to think about. So anyways, I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. Um, this is exactly what a set is. It's really useful for finding things really quickly, adding and removing. And yeah, so if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.